Hello, everyone. Thank you, Tim and Victoria, for the kind introduction. It is a pleasure to be a part of one of your events once again. Um, well, I think that my presentation will connect perfectly with, with yours, um, actually. I, I think you did a great job. And, well, I'm looking forward to, to engaging in a nice conversation and talk a little bit about passenger management and our view, our concept of passenger management. So, well, we can start at any time. I don't see the presentation, but I, I can start. Okay, great. Making your ticket. Um, I chose a name um, because everything begins, in my opinion, in boarding the transportation unit. So let's begin. Here's a question. Does passenger management mean the same to everyone? Well, kind of. So hear me out. I mentioned that for me, things start with a process to board the unit. Here, we have some means of transportation, a car, a plane, a train, a bus, a ship, and well, a tablet. So I'll go through the boarding process for each one of those, and we will be able to see similar and diverging elements between each other. Let's start with a taxi. You're on the street, you raise your hand and yell. Your access to the unit depends on the driver's willingness to stop and pick you up. Once they stop, you have to agree on a fare to your destination. Either you have a meter on the cab or you settle on a price. Done, you're now a passenger. Uber, on your phone or tablet, um, you request a ride to a specific destination and the app shows you a price estimation. You accept and the app matches you to a driver. The driver arrives to your initial location and you verify that it fits with the details on your app. Done, you are a passenger. Then we have the bus. Usually you either hold a card or a ticket to access a transportation unit. The user presents a ticket or card while boarding the unit and done, they become a passenger. Subway. There is a predetermined fee for accessing the system, similar to the bus that we saw before. You buy a ticket or a card for some destination or trips. And by presenting the ticket or card, we can access the transportation system. In short, you must buy a ticket in advance to become a passenger. So now let's go with the train. It's very similar to the subway and you need a ticket. The main difference is that the ticket might or might not have the passenger's name printed. So this is the second transportation method that we have seen where the name of a passenger is important, the Uber and now the train. Plane. The plane, on the other hand, it requires to identify the passenger every time. We all know this. However, the boarding process is similar to ones we have seen before. Actually, the last four transportation methods, the bus, the subway, the train and the plane, all require tickets to board them and they must be scanned or reviewed before boarding. However, the tickets condition vary, and in each of them, there is some form of access control and boarding pass. The taxi might be the exception, but we all know that's the one that is kind of struggling right now, a little bit outdated. Um, I actually don't remember when was the last time I took an actual cab. So that's actually where the core similarities end. Once we board the different units, things become different. However, I dare to ask, how different? We have either found ourselves or heard someone saying, excuse me, you're in my seat. This is a very common expression when we travel or a similar expression, and we tend to look at our boarding pass to verify where we should locate within that unit. This, of course, changes wildly across system. It's not the same to find your seat on a plane or to find your seat on a train or a ship or a bus. It changes. However, you do have to find a seat. To simplify all of this that we've been saying um, and, and just to address the, the problem per se, we'll ask three questions and then analyze the different elements, perks and conditions that in our opinion can shape how we manage passengers. Those questions are who, when, and where. 
We'll ask these questions to the transportation methods we saw before. Taxi, who rides the taxi? Anyone, you raise your hand, you yell, there you go, you get the taxi. When do you travel? Right away. Where? Anywhere you wanna go, a specific destination. Then you have the Uber. Who rides the user? Where? Anywhere they wanna go. When? Now or later? You can probably schedule that trip to the airport you have tomorrow. Then we have bus and subway. Who rides the ticket holder or the card holder? When? Whenever they need to. The system is open. But the location, well, the destination is actually route based. They rely on the stops that this transportation methods has, you know, uh, uh, coordinated. Same goes with the train regarding the route based method. Who writes the ticket holder? Remember that this ticket might or might not have a name on it. The thing that, ch the thing that changes here is that for train travel, you have a set date instead of, uh, for example, the subway where you just simply access the system whenever you want. Here you have a date where you can hop into the train and go to your end destination. Similar thing happens with the plane where you have an itinerary. Who writes the ticket holder? When? In the set date. Where? To the destination port. So now the conversation has really led us to solve this puzzle. Uh, where the elements seem to be similar and entirely different at the same time. So let's break down the boarding pass into different layers. We layer the boarding pass and came up with a set of elements, perks and conditions relevant to managing passengers. The first layer, we call it welcome aboard. It's related to QRs, boarding passes, tickets, and so on. Anything that gets the passenger into the transportation unit. The most important thing here is that it refers to the ID used to identify a passenger. It's important to know that our, in, in our opinion, the basis of passenger management is to consider each passenger a single ID or an ID, depending on the cases or use cases. Moving on, then we have the second layer, the from and to layer. The thing is that trips start and end, and that's a solid truth. What goes in the middle are simply settings. Is that trip, you know, route based? It goes to a specific destination. Is it bound by dates? Is it set activated by a location or something like that? Again, settings. Then we have a third layer called perks, or we call perks, also conditions. These are the benefits or, or characteristics of a specific ticket. Usually we find that as seats and class, a passenger that decides to travel in business class or first class, a passenger, a passenger that chooses a seat, they choose priority boarding or have a benefit to enter a lounge with their ticket, or should I say their passenger ID. Once we have all those three first layers covered with their cores and then their special setups or configurations, we'll have a custom boarding pass and a way to keep track of passengers as soon as someone, somewhere or something asks them may I scan your ticket? And, and that's exactly the point where we're able to match or bind a passenger or a passenger ID to a transportation asset or a transportation operation. That way we can deal reference, activate, perform actions, generate events, notifications, do whatever we need to do with that passenger and start tracking them until they end their trip. So that's why we essentially think that managing passengers is about understanding the use case context in which these passengers exist and travel. We don't believe there is a fundamental necessity to have a myriad of software to control that sort of operations. What is needed, in fact, is a software flexible enough to manage these requirements 
and allow the users to customize the ticket's condition to their needs and processes. So at Golden M, we develop layers, our IoT applications platform, universal integration, flexibility, and an obsession for user experience are newborn solution pillars. Layers allows the users to build their tech ecosystems. The user can use our applications and features we have available. Also, we can develop custom add-on applications and interfaces that adapt entirely to the use case. The best thing is that they all work seamlessly across each other. And that's the reason we believe that a mix of software, IDs, and creativity can lead to impressive tailored solutions for passenger management and actually for anything IoT. And this is Layers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Orlando. Uh, the presentation was so inspiring uh, that we have a question from the audience. Uh, so the actual question <laughs> is, uh, do you have the solution that is already developed by uh, your company that aligns to the idea that you have described in your presentation? Yes, of course. And, and that is actually what Layers is all about. And I, I think that I'll need to, to give a little bit of background on this. So with layers, we have, we have dared to defy paradigms, gone beyond and above to build a genuinely different product and technology for a connected world. Um, layers is our vision of IoT. I think that we have about two years working on this. Um, I think that, that the, all the idea up with a conversation with, with, um, Alexei uh, and, and Sergey and, and Sasha back in, in LA or San Francisco, I don't remember well. But Layers is, and, and, and that's what it all, that kickstarted all of this, right? So Layers is our vision of IoT. So we describe it as a universe made of tools, applications, services, and resources that allow the creation of very particular IoT worlds or realities. And I'm often getting the question now that we have just, you know, announced the solution that what can you do with layers? Well, I say you can choose an app, you can customize it, you can build another one, you can mix them, you can integrate your things, you can connect your existing systems and data so sources, we are already, of course, um, it's based on Flexby, and uh, you can fuse and exchange data. You can create your own tech ecosystems. You can build your own IoT. In essence, Layers adapts to you, your needs, and it allows you to turn your ideas into realities. And uh, yeah, so that that I think that that answers the question. We have something. Um, we have uh, uh, what we believe is is an excellent solution for for what we do. Um, and for the guys in the audience, the people in the audience do what, what, uh, we have done along with you guys for the last almost six years. So it's a continuation of our work. It's actually, um, uh, a consolidation of all of our experience throughout the years. And, uh, I'm sure the entire Gordon community will be able to benefit from it, whatever the case that their use case might be, whatever their, their industry verticals or, or objectives or aims might be we'll be here to, to tailor a solution for them to help them get to that end objective with a flawless user experience. Thank you very much, Orlando. Uh, it was a no, really nice presentation. Thank you very much for the participation. And we wish you to have a really good day. You too, guys. You too. Thank you very much once again. Thank you.